வெல்கம் டு வெக்டர் ஆல்ஜிப்ரா ட்ரிபிள் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் இன்வால்விங் த்ரீ வெக்டர்ஸ் லெட் சி வேரியஸ் பாசிபிலிட்டிஸ் ஆஸ் வி நோ பிட்வீன் டூ வெக்டர்ஸ் தேர் ஆர் டூ டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் ஒன் இஸ் கிராஸ் ப்ராடக்ட் ஒன் இஸ் டாட் ப்ராடக்ட் ஸோ பிட்வீன் த்ரீ வெக்டர்ஸ் இட் கேன் பி டூ கிராஸ் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் A cross B cross C or A cross B dot C or A dot B cross C or A dot B dot C. Let's see what do they mean. All four possibilities we have put. First one. A cross B is a vector since it is a cross product and C is anyway a product, a vector. The product of cross product of two vectors will result in a vector. This is called vector triple product. That means the ultimate result is a vector. That is why it is a vector triple product. Come to this. First pair gives a vector. Then dot next C is another vector. Now dot product is between a vector and a vector. Dot product between vector and vector is a scalar. So ultimate result will be a scalar. It is called scalar triple product. Next possibility, if we do a dot b first, what happens is that becomes a scalar. Now scalar cross a vector, this has no meaning. Scalar cross vector, cross product is possible between two vectors. Of course we do scalar multiplication that is not called scalar product. That is scalar multiplication like 3 times c vector, 5 times c vector etc. if it is a scalar. But then we do not call that multiplication a cross product. So as it is, this is a meaningless thing. So it's not possible, not defined. Same in the next case. A dot B is a scalar. C is a vector. Between a scalar and vector, nor we have a dot product defined. Scalar multiplication is possible, but scalar and a vector, a dot product is not possible. So even this is not defined. So out of these four cases, only these two are valid. First one, ultimate result is vector. So it is called vector triple product. Second case, the ultimate result is scalar. So it's called a scalar triple product. One more thing we notice. That is, in this third case, A, B, C with one dot and one cross. Had we done this B cross C first, that gives us a vector. First A is already a vector. Now vector dot vector is possible. Vector dot vector, the result will be a scalar. So, though we have taken the same thing, A dot B cross C, A dot B cross C, same thing. But, priority is given to the cross product first, not for the dot product. Give the priority to the cross product, which will result it into a vector. Then it is meaningful and the ultimate result will be a scalar. So it will be a scalar triple product. So even if a bracket is not put for this cross product, if we give priority to the cross product, it is meaningful and it will become a scalar triple product and it has a value. Also, the value of this triple product and this triple product using the same ABC vectors will be equal. Why? Proof will follow a little later. Now let's see the geometrical significance of scalar triple product. For that, look at this figure. It is a cuboid. A cuboid has all faces rectangles. Rectangle. A cuboid. A very familiar figure. And look at this one. It's not so familiar. It's called parallelopiped. What is special? Almost like a cuboid, but all sides are parallelograms. Parallelograms. It's a parallelopiped. I'm keeping this parallelopiped here just to have a three-dimensional look for the diagram. I take two vectors along the edges of this parallelopiped. B and C vectors I've taken. Now, a C vector is taken along the third edge that is coming at this common end, common corner. So three vectors taken from this common corner. 
two of them, B and C at the bottom and A is going up slanting, not vertically up like a cuboid. Now, let me draw a perpendicular from the top of this parallelopiped from this vertex down to the base. Base is a parallelogram. A perpendicular H is drawn. Now from this corner, let me join a line to meet the foot of the perpendicular. Now you can see a right triangle formed over here. From which we can see the B vector and C vector. They are lying in the plane, the bottom plane, the base plane. If you take B cross C, that will go perpendicular to the base. B cross C is a vector. It has a magnitude. But as we have already learned in the previous section, magnitude of B cross C will be the area of the base also. Area of the base. Area of this parallel parallelogram. Whose sides are B and C vectors? Area of the base will be this vector's length, that much square units. So, magnitude of B cross C is the area of this base. Let's take the angle made by this B cross C vector with this A vector as theta. Then, if this is theta, here it will be 90 minus theta in this right triangle which we had already taken earlier. This is 90 minus theta. Now, go to the triangle and have sine function. Sine of 90 minus theta is opposite side by hypotenuse. Opposite side is this h. h upon hypotenuse will be length of this vector a. So sine 90 minus theta is h upon magnitude of a. h upon magnitude of a vector. And we know sin 90 minus theta is cos theta. So, h is equal to magnitude of a into cos theta cross multiply. Keep it ready. Now, let's go to this parallelopiped and see what will be the volume of the parallelopiped. Volume of the right figure. Volume of this parallelopiped will be base area into vertical height base area into height. The volume will be base area into height only if the cross section is throughout uniform which means at any stage if you cut it like this, cut it parallel to the base, you will get the same parallelogram at any stage even at the top. Right from bottom to top the slices are this parallelogram slice. In such figures, volume will be base area into the vertical height. So, base area into H. Base area is already magnitude of B cross C. Use here. And H is already done here. Use. That is, magnitude of B cross C into vector A into magnitude of vector A into cos theta. Now let's have a look at this. What have we written here? B cross E is a vector. This is the vector. Its magnitude into magnitude of this A vector and then into cos of angle between that A vector and B cross E. This is what we are taken as theta. That is the theta coming out here. So, magnitude of a vector into magnitude of another vector into cos theta is nothing but the dot product of those two vectors. Dot product of which two vectors? Vector A and B cross C vector. So, B cross C dot A is what seen here. This is what scalar triple product. Using A, B, C, if you do the scalar triple product, it is cross product of two of them and the third one dot. So, Volume of the parallelopiped is B cross C dot A, which will be a scalar quantity, this much cubic units. Now let's look at this parallelopiped in a different way now. I'm taking this side, this gray side as the base, 
to find the volume of this parallel pipe. First of all, I need to find the area of this base, this gray side. This gray side is determined by two vectors, vector A and vector B. Earlier one was determined by vector B and vector C. That is why B cross E was the area of this base. Now, area of this gray side will be magnitude of A cross B. Magnitude of A cross B. And to find the volume, I should be drawing the altitude from the opposite vertex here. This is the edge. This dotted line is the edge. Then, A cross B vector should go perpendicular to the gray plane. This is the direction in which A cross B vector would go. Now, angle between this vector and vector C we take as theta. And the remaining 90 minus theta will be found inside. Now, like in a similar proof, we can have this A cross B dot C will be the volume. A cross B dot C. So, volume of the same parallel pipe is found by this also. Look at the earlier one and look at this one. Here B cross E was first done cross product then dot with A. B cross E first done cross product and then dot with A. Here it is A and B cross product first and dot with C. Both of them are giving volume of same parallel pipette. It's the same parallel pipette. Hence B cross E dot A and A cross B dot C are equal. In fact, numerically, all of these will be equal. Taking A, B, C three vectors with one dot and one cross. But remember, give the priority to the cross product first. Otherwise, it will go meaningless. Let's see how to evaluate scalar triple product. Take two vectors, vector A, A1IK plus A2J plus A3K cap, vector B, B1IK plus B2J plus B3K cap. Then, A dot B is A1B1 A1 plus A2B2 plus A3B3. Components form. A cross B is determinant of IJK, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. These are basic formula for dot product and cross product evaluation. Now, what we need to do now is a dot b cross c. First, we need to calculate b cross c. Let's go for b cross c using this formula. b cross c is determinant ijk b1, b2, b3, b1, c2, c3 using these two. Then, expanding, simple expansion of this determinant is here. Three terms. Now, what about the triple product a dot b cross c? a dot b cross c will be a vector dot this vector. Let me write it. a vector. Here it is. This one as it is copied. Dot this b cross c vector also. Now I need to do the dot product between these two. Now dot product has to follow this rule. a1 into this bracket plus. a2 into this bracket plus. a3 into this bracket. That's here. Now, we observe that this is nothing but the expansion of this determinant. Look, A1 into B2C3 minus B3C2 here. Minus A2 into B1C3 minus C1B3 can be written as plus A2 into reverse terms. And here it is. So, if three vectors are given in components form like this, we can calculate the triple product just by evaluating the determinant. A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3 as three terms, three lines, three rows.